welcome back everyone i hope you are doing well inshallah let's get started today with prime time bismillah rahman rahim we now have hussein reciting surah al-mulk one ruku this recitation is by hussein shomrez who is one of our hifz students who enrolled on the june 2020 hifz program MashaAllah, he has completed the whole juz Amma. Congratulations, Hussein Shamrez. تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم معيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات وتباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فارجع البصر هل ترى من فتور المصير <تصفيق> إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها شكيكا وهي تفور تكاد تميز من الغيث كلما ألقي فيها فوج سعلهم خضنتها ألم يأتكم نذير قالوا بلى قد جانا نذير فكذبنا وقلنا ما نذر الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في دلال كبير فقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نعكر ما كنا في أحاب السعير فاعترفوا بذنبهم فصحقا لأسحاب السعير إن الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب لهم مغفرة وجوه كبير وَسِرُوا قَوْلَهُمْ وَاجْفَرُوا بِهِ إِنَّهُ عَلِيمُ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your hard work. Keep up the good work. Follow us on social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. For more information on how to enroll on our HIFS program, please go on https colon forward slash forward slash www.jamiaalmarif.co.uk MashaAllah, well done for that. Now we will have Elena Noah reciting the first kalama. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Elena Noor and I will be reciting the first kalama on the La ilaha illallahu Muhammadu we now have a reach with a hadith explanation. Assalamu alaikum everyone, my name is Arish and today I'm going to be telling you a hadith and the explanation behind it. So, Abu Hurairah anhu reported that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, When a man goes out of the door of his house, there are two angels with him who are appointed over him. 
If he says Bismillah, which means in the name of Allah, they say you have been guided. If he says La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, which means there is no power and no strength except with Allah, they say you are protected. If he says Tawakkaltu ala Allah, which means I have my trust in Allah, they say you have been taken care of. Then his two Qarins, which means Satan's, come to him and they the two angels say what do you want with the man who has been guided protected and taken care of and the book rec- reference for this is ibn majah so the explanation of this hadith is if you say these small small words they impact your life very very greatly so you should think about all the things you do all the day and how these angels have protected you very greatly throughout the day so jazakallah for listening everyone and i hope you all have a good day i love is everyone what a nice hadith explanation mashallah now we have sulayla will be reciting will be telling us about the battle of badr that is the first battle in islam assalamu alaikum warahmatullah this is the battle of badr poster and it's also known as the day criterion this battle took place 17th of ramadan and badr is located 70 miles from medina muslims were outnumbered by a ratio of 103 and 5,000 hate muslims achieved victory over the Quraysh. Over here is the nearest bank and below it is the headquarters of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the Muslim camp. To the east is the direction of Medina and south is the Al Safara Valley. Quite below that is the tank and the well which was captured by Muslims. The tomb of Muslim players is towards the west and quite below that is where Muslims destroyed wells. The pageant camp is south west and this is the, the direction where pages arrive vessel. This is the well where pages dump dead bodies and below that is the yonder bank. This battle drew a line between good and bad and this battle is called for a Khan for this reason. Without Allah SWT help and power and mind we would have lost this battle. And this battle destroyed the Quraysh's pride. The Muslims became a new power in Arabia and Surah Al-Anfal was revealed during this battle. an al means spoils the work and it's the A Surah of the Quran. Allah always says be grateful to him because without his help, power and might we would have never won this battle. Jazakallah. Listen to Zakir and Safiya reciting Mawla Yasalli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zakaria. My name is Safiya, and today we'll be reciting Sida Buddha Sharif. Mawla Yasalli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habi.
So merciful is your nature and so high is your name. All the prophets and messengers are in need of you and they all take sips from your ocean and desire to serve you Mawlaya Salli wa Sallam Daiman Abadan ala habibika khairul halki kulli bimi the Lord has won by the beauty of the curse in your head and by the place of your birth and by the cloak that you wear the Lord has worn by the beauty of the Lord of your face so beautiful you are Ya Mustafa bless us with one gaze Mawla Ya Salli wa Sallam La Iman Abadan Ala Habi Bika Khairil Halki Kulli Himi Jazakallah Jazakallah Talking about Adab. I am going to be showing you and explaining how um, I've done my poster. But before we even get into that, the poster is based on Adab. And you may be asking, what is Adab? Adab is basically doing Sunnah all the time where you get um, the opposite of sins. So if you do something good, uh, it is adab. For example, treating people nicely, um, it it's adab. If you don't do good deeds and um, you do bad deeds, that is not adab. So you should get what adab is now, and and you should only do good deeds for Allah and not to show off, which is adab. And you should always respect your parents and teachers, which is also another form of adab. So, what is so special about adab? You get loads of sunnah. Um, uh, you could be a very, you could become a very good person, but you should always be careful with what you do in life. Like you could be very good, do Quran, do your prayer, but you might not be doing adab. Adab is very important. Treat people how you want to be treated. Don't do good deeds just to show off. Don't associate other partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only do good deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what, n not to show off for anything. Don't be arrogant one bit, because if you have arrogant, then it is very bitter and it, it's very bad. And you should always respect your parents and teachers no matter what. No matter what you, you do, always respect your parents and teachers. Because your, parent, your parents raised you up and you're living right now because of them. And your teachers, you, you know how to even speak because of them. They teach you how to speak, they teach you how to recognise what is what. Like for example, this pen right here. It's a pen, right? You recognize it. This color, you recognize it because of your teacher. You should never be arrogant to your teachers or parents and always respect them. That is a very good form of adab. And you get sonna for it. You should never do shirk. And once you've hit the age of puberty, you should do, like, you should fast the whole month. Um, because it's adab and you should do it. Adab is very important in Islam. No matter what you do, you should always remember about doing adab at all times. That was lovely, mashallah. Now we have Ayana reciting Dua Kunut. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ayana. I am going to recite Tua Ikunut. A'udhu billahi mina shaitani rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma inna nasainuka wa nastaghfuruka wa nu'minu bika wa natawakkalu alayka wa nusni alayka al-khayr wa nashkuruka wa nakfuruka wa nakla wa nakkuruka wa yafajuruka Allahumma iyaka na abudu wa wa laka nasalli nashadu wa ilayka a nafiru wa narju رحمتك أذابك إن أذابك بالكفار ملهك كذلك الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ishan and today I'll be talking about the Firth of Salah. There are six Firth of Salah. The f- first one is opening Takbir, which is known as at tahrima The second one is Qiyam, which is standing. The third one is Qira'ah, which is recitation. The fourth one is Ruku, which is bowing. The fifth one is Sujood, which is prostration. And the sixth one is al qada Al-Akhira, which is the last sitting. For the takbir, it must be pronounced whilst in the upright position for a salah, where standing is obligatory. Takbir can be made in sitting posture for nafal prayer. In a congregational prayer, the takbir must be pronounced after the imam. And now on standing. Standing is obligatory for all fard and wadi prayers. It is not obligatory for nafal prayers. One must stand for as long as it is possible for him to stand. Someone unable to perform such dark as sit and perform the prayer with gestures. Standing is also obligatory upon someone who is able to do so by means of a staff or leaning on a wall. For Kira'a recitation, each letter is to be uttered correctly. To recite silently means to such an extent that only you can hear your voice. The follower is not allowed to recite behind the Imam. And now for ruku. The best form of ruku is for the back to be straight. Being motionless is wajib in ruku. And now on prost- prostration. In prostration, you should place your forehead on the ground. One who is excused from placing his forehead must perform sajda with the bone of his nose. Two prostration must be performed in every ruku. The forehead must be firmly positioned on the ground. And now for the last sitting, which is known as Qada, qada Akhira. The, obli- the obligation is to sit for the period taken to recite the Tashahud. We are thankful to Jami al Mbari for teaching us important knowledge through summer camp. That we that we had in the summer camp this year. Now let's see what some of our students have learned today in summer camp 2020. These are the months in Islam: Muharram, Safar, Rabi'a al-Awwal, Rabi'a al-Thani. These are the months in Islam: Jumad al-Ulla, Jumad al-Ukra, Rajab and Shaban, Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan and Shawwal, Zulqa and Fulhijjah. These are the months of Islam. Telling us the months of Islam. My name is Hadija, and today I'll be talking about the months of Islam and events that took place in, in the months. Muharram is the first month of the Islamic calendar. 
the battle of Karbala took place in this month. Then is Safar. Then is Rabi al Awal. The Prophet وسلم, was born in this month. Then is then is Rabi al Thani. Then is Jamaat al Ula. Then is Jamaat al Thani. Then is Rajab. Isra and Miraj took place in this month. Then is Shaban. On the 15th of Shaban is Laylat al Barat, the night of freedom. Then is Ramadan. We fast 30 days in this month. Then is Shawwal. So Shawwal is Eid al Fitr. Then is Dhul Qadha. And then the last month of the Islamic calendar, Dhul Zil Hajj. Also, we do Qurbani in this month. On the 10th of Zil Hajj, we have Eid al Adha. As salatu was salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. As salatu was salamu alayka ya Habiballah. As salatu was salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah. As salatu was salamu alayka ya Khataman Nabiyin. Until next time, as salamu alaykum. Jazakallah for all those fantastic performances today. Last up, we have Hamza reciting Surah al Ikhlas. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kul huwa Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. وَلَمْ يَقُلْ اللَّهُ كُفُوَنَ عَهَدْ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everyone Welcome back to quiz number 30 Please can everyone have a pen and paper in front of them to do this quiz There will be 10 questions and I will be giving you the answers at the end Question number one. For which prophet did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the iron soft? For which prophet did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the iron soft? Question number two. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful name Ar Rahman mean? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful name Ar Rahman mean? Question number three. Name the title of the surah, which is also the name of an ancient empire. Name the title of the surah, which is also the name of an ancient empire. Question number four. What is shirk or polytheism? What is shirk or polytheism? Question number five. Where was the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam born? Where was the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam born? Question number six. What did the Queen of Saba and her people worship? What did the Queen of Saba and her people worship? Number seven. Who was Hazrat Hajra alayhi salam? Who was Hazrat Hajra alayhi salam? Question number eight. Who was Abu Lahab? Who was Abu Lahab? Question number nine. What happened to the people who did not believe in the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam? What happened to the people who did not believe in the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam? Question number 10. Who brought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's revelation to the prophets? Who brought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's revelation to the prophets? Now we give you the answers, so get ready to mark. Number 1. The iron was made soft for the Prophet Daud alayhi salam. It is mentioned in chapter 34 verse 10. Number 2. Ar-Rahman means the compassionate. It is mentioned in chapter 1 verse 3. Number 3. The title of the surah, which is also the name of an ancient empire, is Surah Ar-Rum, which is chapter 30. Number 4. Shirk means associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who does this is called Mushrik. Number 5. The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam was born in Ur, also known as Iraq. Number 6. The Queen of Saba and her people worship the sun is mentioned in chapter 27 verse 24. Number 7. Hazrat Hajra alayhi salam was the second wife of the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Number 8. 
Abu Lahab was the uncle of the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and was the enemy of Islam. It is mentioned in chapter one hundred and eleven. Number nine. The people of Nur alayhi salam drowned in a flood. It is mentioned in chapter seven, verse sixty-four. Number ten. The angel Jibreel alayhi salam brought Allah subhanahu wa taala's revelation to the Prophet. There'll be ten questions, and I'll be give you the answers at the end. Question number one: How are the Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam and the Prophet Ismail alayhi salam related? How are the Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam and the Prophet Ismail alayhi salam related? Question number two: Which surah is called purity of faith? Which surah is called purity of faith? Question number three: What is the meaning of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's most beautiful name, Ashahid? What is the meaning of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's most beautiful name, Ashahid? Question number four: Which prophet killed Jalut, also known as Goliath? Which prophet killed Jalut, also known as Goliath? Question number five: Who does Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala refer to as the best of people, and who are mentioned in the Torah and the Gospel also? Who does Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala refer to as the best of people? And who are mentioned in the Torah and the Gospel also? Question number six: How should we enter others' homes? How should we enter others' homes? Question number seven: Who brought the news of the Holy Son to Maryam alayhi salam? Who brought the news of the Holy Son to Maryam alayhi salam? Question number eight: Which surah of the Quran tells us about the birth of the Prophet Isa alayhi salam, or Jesus alayhi salam, and his mother Maryam alayhi salam? Which surah of the Quran tells us about the birth of the Prophet Isa alayhi salam, or Jesus alayhi salam, and his mother Maryam alayhi salam? Number nine. Which holy book was revealed to the Prophet Musa alayhi salam? Which holy book was revealed to the Prophet Musa alayhi salam? Question number ten: What information did the bird called Hudhud bring to the Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam? What information did the bird called Hudhud bring to the Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam? Now, be give you the answers. So go ready to mark. Number one, the Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam and the Prophet Ismail alayhi salam were both brothers. It is mentioned in Surah Ibrahim, chapter fourteen, verse thirty-nine. Number two, Surah Al-Ikhlas is called purity of faith. It is mentioned in chapter one hundred and twelve. Number three, a shahid means the witness. It is mentioned in chapter three, verse ninety-eight. Number four, the Prophet Dawood alayhi salam killed Goliath. It is mentioned in chapter two, verse two hundred and fifty-one. Number five, the companions of the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam are the best of people who are mentioned in the Torah and the Gospel by Allah subhanahu wa taala. It is mentioned in chapter three, verse one hundred and ten. Number six. When we enter others' homes, we must ask permission first, and then greet them, and should not enter until permission is given. It is mentioned in chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-seven to twenty-eight. Number seven. Hazrat Jibril alayhi salam brought the news to Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. It is mentioned in chapter nineteen, verse seventeen to twenty. Number eight, Surah nineteen, which is also known as Surah Maryam, tells us about the birth of the Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Number nine, the holy book which was revealed to the Prophet Musa alayhi salam was the Torah. It is mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter two, verse fifty-three, and also in Surah Nisa, chapter three, verse three. 
Number ten, the Hud Hud brought information about the Queen to the Prophet Salman alayhi salam. It is mentioned in chapter twenty-seven, verse twenty to twenty-two. Jazakallah for listening. Allah face. All the performances on prime time were amazing. Please log into www.menti.com. www.menti.com. Hope to see you all, insha Allah. Allah peace.